This is Montgomery Mosaic on 1450 WOL, WPRS, HD2, and worldwide on WOLDCnews.com. Montgomery Mosaic features topics of interest to Montgomery County residents, businesses, and visitors. Here now is your host, Deborah Milo. Well, good morning, Montgomery County, and welcome to the April edition of Montgomery Mosaic. I'm your host, Deborah Milo. Thanks so much for joining us today. Well, it looks like spring has finally sprung, and you know what that means. Summer's not too far behind. With the change of seasons come outdoor activities, and here to talk to us today about the various recreational programs we have here in the county is Gabe Albernaz, Director of the Montgomery County Department of Recreation, and Karen Jordan, Recreation Supervisor with the department. Now, before we get started talking to Gabe and Karen, I want to also talk a little bit about the Design for Life property tax credit that's offered by the county. You can build or renovate your home with accessible features with this Design for Life property tax credit to help with the cost. Now, there's going to be a Design for Life showcase, and you can even meet building professionals. They're going to have beautiful examples of homes with accessible features and all kinds of wonderful things. The Design for Life showcase is going to take place on Saturday, May 13th at the Silver Springs Civic Building from 10 a.m. to 2, and admission is free. Design for Life is for all ages and all stages. Now, to get more information, call 311 or go to designforlifemc.org. Now, to pick back up where we left off, Gabe and Karen, welcome to Montgomery Mosaic. I'm so glad you can join us today. Thanks for inviting us, Deborah. We're thrilled to be here. Thank you, Deborah. Montgomery County Recreation always has great things going on. Now, look, I can't keep up with it because there really is a lot. And that's what we're going to talk about today. But before we get to that, Gabe, I want you to share a little bit with our listeners just a little bit about your role as director and how your career decision led you to work in recreation services. Sure, Deborah, and thank you for your tremendous public service as a fantastic host of this important program. Ooh, I wow. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely true. Got it. Got it put that in there. Um, So I have been director of the Department of Recreation for almost 10 years now. I was appointed by County Executive Legate in 2007. Prior to that, I was working as the deputy director of a nonprofit organization that is in D.C. called the Latin American News Center. And so I was specifically responsible for managing a lot of their youth development work and did a lot of direct service with those youth. And when the county executive came on board, he was looking for somebody to lead the recreation department to provide more grassroots programming and services Mm -hmm. um, to our youth, as well as our seniors and our entire population as a whole, but in particular our at-risk population. Mm -hmm. And so I had the opportunity while I was working at LAYC to open up their offices in Montgomery and Prince George's County. And while doing that, got to know people that ended up serving on Ike Leggett's transition team. And that's how I was uh, appointed to this position. Wow. I didn't realize how much you had done, Gabe. That's a lot in 10 years, let me tell you. Yeah, it's been a lot. It's been (laughs) a lot. It's a great job. Karen, how about you? Talk a little bit about what led you to a career. I know we talked about it in the green room, but I want you to share it with our audiences, too. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, many moons ago, um, <laughs> I decided that I I like to be I like to lead and and we work with children and youth. Um, so I just knew that I didn't want to work in the classroom with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when I went to college, I I started with the therapeutic recreation and decided that uh, I wanted to go into community recreation instead. Um, graduated there, and when I came out, I came to this area, and, and I began working as a recreation coordinator at a transitional housing development. Mm-hmm. Uh, while I was there, I began to partner with Montgomery County Recreation to offer programs and things at that facility, um, and then things just kept going, and I became a uh, recreation specialist with the recreation department, and I've been here for 24 years now. And so Gabe recognized your amazing talents and capabilities <laughs> and said, hey, listen, you got to come on board. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. Mm-hmm. Gabe, I want to talk a little bit about the mission of the department. Can you talk about that a bit? Sure. Our mission is to provide a wide variety of programs and services for people of all ages and abilities. At the end of the day, our job is to help improve the quality of life of county residents and help support them in whatever their needs or interests happen to be. We have over 43 recreation facilities across the county. They include our recreation centers, our indoor and outdoor public pools, 
We're also responsible for the coordination of a lot of the large county events, like the 4th of July fireworks, mm -hmm. the jazz festival right here in downtown Silver Spring, and a variety of the Thanksgiving Day Parade, and a variety of other programs and services as well. And annually, Deborah, we serve over 400,000 Montgomery County residents through all of those facilities and programs. That's amazing. Oh, and I don't think that people put together how res that you're responsible for the uh, Thanksgiving par Thanksgiving Day Parade as well as the, the Jazz Festival here in Silver Spring. That's right. That you work in conjunction with other partners to be able to do that. That's exactly right. We would not be able to do it alone. We work closely with sister county agencies, but also partner a great deal with the community, uh, with volunteers and a number of fantastic nonprofit organizations as well. Now, I want to talk about a little bit also, and I want to congratulate you again on your appointment to the Presidential Leadership Scholars Program. That's a huge honor. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> it's been a transformative experience, to say the least. I can imagine. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that and how it's going to positively impact the county? So, things are a little crazy right now in our nation, as we all know. Oh, yeah. There is just not enough bipartisan collaboration. Yes. And so, Presidents Clinton and George W. Bush about five years ago were on a trip, I believe, to Haiti and were able to establish a strong professional and personal relationship Indeed. and realized that they were in a position to provide a forum and a mechanism for people from across the country to collaborate together. And so they formed this incredible program with foundations from uh, two presidential Republican presidential libraries and two Democratic presidential libraries, and there are 60 scholars from across the country, uh, from the public, private, nonprofit, military sectors, mm -hmm. that are hearing from the presidents, discussing uh, important matters with uh, cabinet officials from those former administrations. I'm about halfway through the program and just got back from Little Rock, Arkansas and visiting uh, President Clinton's library last week mm -hmm. and had the opportunity to meet him and, and a number of members of his cabinet. Outstanding. And it's yeah. just been a fantastic experience. And the leadership program focuses on communication, collaboration, strategic planning, and all of those elements I hope to bring here to Montgomery County. You know, that's one thing I have to say about the leadership of our county. It is an outstanding, uh, outstanding leadership we have, and we're just very grateful, you know, to be able to bring all these uh, incredible minds together to do great things. So this is just going to be an, a an addition to all the great work. Thank you. I agree completely. So let me ask you, Karen, how important is it for the department to offer such a wide range of programs that are nationally recognized? I know there's emphasis on quality facilities, caliber of programming, especially inclusiveness among, among all populations. Talk a little bit about that. Okay. Um, I think I'm a little biased, Deborah, that I've been working with facilities um, my, almost my entire career with the Recreation Department. Um, so I'm going to speak on the centers right now, uh, if that's mm -hmm. okay. Um, as they, there are 21 community centers throughout the, uh, throughout the uh, county. Mm -hmm. um, and we think of each, each facility as a flagship of the department, a big icon in the community that serves as a gathering place for safe, fun, healthy activities among neighbors and peers. So mm -hmm. our tagline is we bring communities together. And I think that's important. It that, is. That um, youth and, and families have a safe place to come to participate in leisure activities um, and, 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 and bring, you know, they come together and, and um, we also offer memberships, programs, and rental opportunities to the public. Mm -hmm. um, rental opportunities, they can have weddings, graduations, and things like that. So I just think it's important that that we remain um, the flagship and have everyone uh, be in a safe place for the community. And that safety mm -hmm. is so critical, especially when you've got so many uh, young people, so many seniors, and mm -hmm. just everybody in general. Mm -hmm. Would you yes. agree? I do. I do agree with that. Yes. Gabe, is there anything you want to chime in on with that? So under County Executive Leggett's leadership, we've actually added six new recreation centers to, to wow. the county's inventory. And our facilities are... Um, wonderful, as Karen mentioned, gathering places that offer programs and services, but all of them typically have a high school-sized gym, social halls, uh, weight and exercise activities, but it, at the end of the day, they're buildings. Um, <laughs> yes. What makes them special is the people that work in them That's and the right. people that volunteer in them. That's and right. so we provide a wide variety of programs and services in the arts and humanities and culture and dance 
and programs for, as I said before, people of all ages and abilities. And we also try to be flexible. If there right. are residents that have an interest or a program or service that we're not currently offered, we want to hear from them um, because mm -hmm. there is an opportunity, thanks to County Executive Leggett's leadership, for us to really be able to meet our residents where they are and provide programs and services that interest them. Mm -hmm. That's right. And as, as a citizen of the county, I know how important that is. Mm -hmm. Hello again, listeners, and thank you for tuning into Montgomery Mosaic on Talk Radio 1450 WOL. I'm your host, Deborah Milo, and today I have the pleasure of talking to Gabe Albernaz, Director of the Montgomery County Department of Recreation, and Karen Jordan, and Karen's a supervisor with the department. And we were earlier talking about the different types of uh, programs that are offered, so I want to kind of continue with that discussion. So I hope you're leaning in and listening because they've got all kinds of wonderful things to offer. So, Karen, I want to ask a question. Mm -hmm. Speaking of programs, a lot of families, a lot of families, have summer programs on their minds. You know, kids are going to be out for the summer, and, you know, they want to know what's out there. Mm -hmm. What kind of programs are being offered for this coming summer? Okay, Montgomery County has uh, a slew of uh, <laughs> summer camp programs. I know they do. The county. Um, Just a quick, a, a quick view, a view, a snapshot, if you will. Sure, sure. Um, we have, like I said, over 100 um, camps offered throughout the county, um, different summer camps for ages 3 to 12. Camps include all interests, including cooking, arts, swimming, the STEM program, mm, performing oh, that's arts. That's right, that's yeah. right. Sports, music, dance, and, and, and also therapeutic um, camps. Um, our most affordable and most popular program is our Summer Fun Center program, which are held mostly in our community recreation centers. Um, and it's a all-day program for one price for six weeks. It, it's held actually from 8 to 6 p.m. You don't have to worry about before care or after mm -hmm. care. Wait a second, six weeks? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so you know I'm taking in all this information, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, yes. And um, which really, Gabe, you could probably expound on. It's a very affordable program. It's $395. It's about $1.30 an hour. Oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah. So. I have, folks, I hope you hear that. Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. We're very proud of all of our summer, summer programs mm -hmm. uh, that we offer. And uh, we are also offering this year um, that we'd like to highlight is due to the late start of the school year, mm -hmm. uh, we have an additional two weeks to help parents who are looking for additional options for their children. So it's like centers throughout the county. Mm -hmm. We're offering two additional weeks of summer, uh, summer programs. Now, see, you're yeah. making me want to dial life back a little bit and mm. become a kid again <laughs> to participate, you know? Yes, yes. That's amazing. So mm -hmm. now that's a lot of programs you're offering for the summer. Mm -hmm. You're going to need a lot of help. Yes. Yeah. So Absolutely. about how many volunteers and seasonal employees do you normally expect to hire? Uh, we hire a little, about 2,800 employees annually, and 1,200 of them work for us in the summer. It's predominantly youth uh, between the ages of 15 to 23 that work for us. These are our camp counselors, our lifeguards, the folks that help staff our centers, because summer season in our industry is like tax season for accountants. It's the busiest time of year. <laughs> um, all of our wonderful and beautiful parks are obviously bustling with people, and so um, and our pools are, are among the most popular attractions that we have within the county, too. Well, that's going to be our next topic when we come back for break, from break. But right now, we're going to take a little bit of a break, and we'll come back and talk about the pools. This is Montgomery Mosaic on Talk Radio 1450 WOL with your host, Deborah Milo. And today, my guests from the Department of Recreation are Gabe Albernaz, Director, and Karen Jordan, Recreational Supervisor. They're sharing some great information about some of the programs in the county's recreation department. So... Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. County friends, welcome back to Montgomery Mosaic on Talk Radio 1450 WOL. This is your host, Deborah Milo, and I have the pleasure of talking to Gabe Albernaz and Karen Jordan from the Department of uh, Recreation Services. And we're sharing, they're sharing some great information about summer programs and swimming pool opening. And we were going to talk about that a little bit um, so I know that it's typically a very busy time, but I know there's a huge range of programs. Talk a little bit about some of the other things that are offered at the uh, centers. Karen, you were talking to me earlier about the, shall we say, seniors program, <laughs> the 55-plus or the 50-plus programs. Can you talk a little bit about some of those programs? Sure, and we say 55 Act 55 plus active That's adult better. programs. That's better. Oh, that sounds That's better, better. Morning? Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, we have five senior centers throughout the, center, uh, mm -hmm. the Montgomery County. 
uh, in Damascus Holiday Park, Long Branch, Shrine House, and White Oak, which they offer hundreds of programs, and many of them are free for all county residents. 55 and over. Our neighborhood programs, or the 55 plus active adult programs, um, there are 13 active adult programs in the recreation centers uh, themselves. They're usually open two days a week. Um, for more information about that, you can always check the website, but I can tell you mm -hmm. that our directors do a wonderful job at um, providing a variety of programs for the for this. I'm sorry, 55 plus active adult members? <laughs> Do not be afraid to say <laughs> that. Some I'm, of us are very proud of that. I'm close to it, so it's okay. <laughs> um, but they, uh, our, our participants are line dancing. They're going on. Oh, nice. Yes, they're going on trips. They're having, um, uh, like, uh, parties and things, uh, proms, dances. Very things nice. Things like that. And they're very uh, involved in their own planning of the activities as well. So. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about the Her Time to Shine. Gabe, can you talk about that? So we have tremendous athletes in Montgomery County, and as a yes, we country, do. we need to do more to celebrate, in particular, our female athletes. Oh, yes. And so we have uh, produced, this will be the second year we've produced an event to really highlight the incredible role that sports play in building confidence and really helping to provide a holistic support structure for our, our young women in Montgomery County. And mm -hmm. so we are highlighting the programs and services that we have um, that especially cater to their needs. And we have a number of fantastic vendors. The event is on April 22nd. Mm -hmm. um, I believe it is from... 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Silver Spring Civic Building. There will be workshops, there will be giveaways, there will be promotions, but a lot of information regarding fantastic athletic and different sports-based programs here in Montgomery County. It's a well-coordinated, well-run <coughs> event. It's one that I'm especially proud of, and there will be thousands of people that participate. Oh, that's going to be wonderful, to say the least. Now, I want to shift a little bit, excuse me, to talk about the swimming pools. Let's talk about the opening of the swimming pools and, and Water Safety Day. So how many county-owned pools are there? We have 11 county-owned <laughs> pools, four indoor that are open 360 days a year, mm -hmm. 18 hours a day. And then we have seven pools that we open Labor Day weekend and close uh, Memorial Day weekend. And these are, I'm sorry, Memorial to Labor Day, I always <laughs> do that. Um, the, these are by far our most popular attraction overall. Our, our oh, yeah. aquatic facilities receive a little over 2 million visits per year. Um, and it's in a very affordable way for families to come out and be able to spend some quality time together, particularly at our outdoor pools. But we offer a lot of swim instruction. And one of the things that I've noticed in the last 10 years in the county is there's an alarming percentage of children and their parents that don't know how to swim. You're right about that. And mm -hmm. this is a life safety issue. It is. That is not something that we can take for granted. There have been tragedies um, that have disproportionately impacted communities of color. Mm -hmm. um, for the last several years in our region. And so we do encourage families to take advantage of the swim instruction and lessons that we have at all of our pools. And we also encourage parents that if, if for whatever reason you've never had the opportunity, you're a little timid, you're a little scared, don't be afraid. We, we do offer classes that um, are very accommodating, very flexible, and we have among the best swim, swim instructors in the entire country. My kids have learned how to swim uh, through many of our programs and services here in the county, mm -hmm. and I can personally attest to how qual high quality they are. And I know that there are a lot of, to your, to your point, there are a lot of adults who just have never had the chance to learn to swim. That's right. And so I think it's, imp it's important, it's good to hear that you've got some great swim instructors because I think that's critical. And, you know, the aquatic industry as a whole has just exploded in our region. Um, I think it started with Michael Phelps from Baltimore. Right. Uh, and it has now extended to Katie Ledecky, which mm -hmm. we're all obviously very proud of here oh, in Montgomery yes. County. But we've seen a significant increase in the number of youth interested in competitive swimming. But it's also just such a fantastic sport and exercise for our senior population mm -hmm. as well. This is Montgomery Mosaic on Talk Radio, 1450 WOL. I'm Deborah Milo, your host, and we're glad you've joined us. Today's guests are Gabe Albernaz, Director, and Karen Jordan, Supervisor with the Montgomery County Department of Recreation. We're talking about the swimming programs that they have and, you know, all the wonderful things that the department offers. So now I know that, let's see, um... I wanted to talk a little bit about the relationship between the swim leagues and the county. Do, yeah. the, do the swim leagues actually come, have a relationship with the county? Yes, yeah, so we, 
all of the high school swim teams uh, practice and have their meets in our facilities. And mm -hmm. in addition to that, uh, swim clubs have also become very e even more popular than they have been before. Right. We have a partnership with the city of Rockville where we offer the Mo uh, Rockville Montgomery Swim Club that's been in existence for um, almost 30 years now. But there are a number of other clubs that also have... Um, fantastic uh, clubs across the county that, that provide really fantastic programs and services for youth. Mm -hmm. And we host many of those meets within our facilities. Uh, and we're actually about to build a new pool right here in downtown That's Silver Spring. That's what which I'm saying. That's exciting. Yes. Uh, of, of all the things that we've done so far, and there have been many, I had the opportunity to meet President Obama at one point through our programs and services. Wow. He was a coach in one of our youth basketball leagues. Very nice. But... This program, this facility is going to be fantastic. It's going to be over 100,000 square feet, and it will combine both a recreation center and a pool in one central location right here in downtown Silver Spring. That's that facility amazing. will be opening in the next three years. That's amazing. So how does someone sign up for a swim class or a summer program? So the best way is to visit our website, mm -hmm. uh, which is an offshoot of the county's website, and it's uh, Montgomery County md.gov backslash rec. But if you just Google Montgomery County Recreation, our website will immediately pop up. And we have background information on our programs and services and facilities, but you can also get a copy of the most recent Recreation and Parks Guide, mm -hmm. which includes all of our uh, instruction and programs uh, that you can find out about right there. But one thing Karen might be able to elaborate on, a number of our recreation centers have programs that are not, in fact, advertised in the guide. These are community-driven, community-focused events, and so I encourage people to visit their local recreation centers mm -hmm. and facilities to find out more about what's happening in those facilities. Okay, Karen, can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, and one uh, program in particular I would like to highlight is um, a core program in most of our facilities. It's called Club Adventure, mm -hmm. and it's an after-school program for elementary school age uh, youth, um, ages 5 to 12, and it's a very nominal fee. It's $65 per month, um, and wow. we even meet on half days, and it's very important in our communities that youth have a safe, I know I harp on safety, mm -hmm. but a very I'm safe, glad you do, though, safe yes. yet fun place to go after school. We don't, uh, we try to keep the youth from going home. No one, yes. no one's in at home with them. Um, so we, we open arms and bring them in, and they learn uh, recreational classes, nutrition, and health, um, a wide variety of, of things that we do with them. Uh, and we're very proud of that program and hope to expand it if mm -hmm. we can, um, if, if we can work that out. So I, I just wanted to highlight that. But our facilities have core programs. Then we have center-specific programs that, because every community is different, and we have to... Um, a program specifically for that 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 uh, community. Just to highlight two that are coming up is mm -hmm. the White Oak and the Ross Body Community Days are coming up in June. Mm -hmm. um, and White Oak is in Silver Spring. Right. And uh, Ross Body is in Brookville, Maryland. Oh, not Brookville, but Sandy Spring, Sandy Maryland. Sandy Spring. Yes, right. ma'am. And um, so they have two large uh, events coming up. And that those two events basically show how different communities can be. Mm -hmm. um, and but yet, how we can st we still program and, and, and offer activities for them. So. Well, the fact that you take the time to be able to determine what kind of the community that you're going to be serving, mm -hmm. and you make sure that you design programs that will address the community's needs, yes. that's an amazing and an outstanding feat. At least I think so. Yeah, I think so, because that speaks to the wholeness of being able to want to address a person's needs and wants, the whole person. You absolutely. know what I mean? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, before we go today, Gabe, is there anything you want to add? Well, just a couple things. We have a, another fantastic event coming up called Move More Montgomery, which mm -hmm. will be on May 6th from noon to 4 at our Bower Drive Community Center. We launched an initiative last year called the 100 Mile Challenge to really encourage our residents to become more active and take advantage of the wonderful recreational amenities that they have in their backyard. I have the opportunity to travel um, around the country for various um, programs and I can tell you, what we have here in Montgomery County is just the best in the country. It really uh, our, is. <laughs> our parks and recreation amenities and facilities, they're, they're, they are second to none. And I hope people take advantage of them. Wonderful. Gabe and Karen, thank you so very much for coming on today's show. And folks, don't forget, we're on the second Wednesday of every month. 
and just coming back and join us. And as always, thank you for tuning in and sharing your time. Now, don't forget, next month we're on again Montgomery Mosaic on 1450 WOL, WPRS HD2, and worldwide on WOLDCnews.com. Till next time, get outside and have some fun. You've been listening to Montgomery Mosaic, featuring topics of interest to Montgomery County residents, businesses, and visitors. For more information or a copy of the show, email public information at montgomerymd.gov or call 240-777-6507. Be sure to tune in at this time on the second Wednesday every month for Montgomery Mosaic on 1450 WOL. WPRS, HD2, and worldwide on WOLDC News.